On the 16th day of October, Halloween gave to me 16 demons jazzercising, 15 runes on parchment, 14 Joseph's whispering, 13 seniors bleeding, 12 creepy masks, 11 dancing demons, 10 Catholic monsters, 9 priests a miracling, 8 Jerry's vamping, 7 Jody's oinking, 6 body swapping, 5 reeds a wolfing, 4 drunken uncles, 3 werewolf colonies, 2 spooky sisters, and a psycho who killed Janet Lee. Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome to the 16th day of our 31 days of Halloween. And it's a little bittersweet because as of today, we are more than halfway through the month of October and thus our journey through 31 horror films selected by me and you uh, for this celebration. And we land (laughs) on a weird one for today, but it's one I put on the list because I hadn't seen it in some time. And I wanted a good excuse to do so. And this continues our look at the uh, the demonic side of our 31 Days of Halloween. Uh, yesterday, of course, was Curse of the Demon, a.k.a. Night of the Demon, depending on which version you see. And today we land on Demons 2, the follow-up to Lamberto Bava's Demons. As you may have heard, Mo Bava is Mo Betta. And this begs the question, is it? Look. Let's get this out of the way right now. Demons 2 is not as good as Demons. But, I argue, it is crazy and deserving of a place on this list. Why, you ask? Okay, let's get into it. A lot of this doesn't make any sense, but uh, neither does the original Demons. So, the idea seems to be that either uh, the residents of this high-rise... Namely, a girl who is having a birthday party and she's being a real pill about it, along with her friends who are all dancing. She is either watching a news report that is about how there used to be demons because of that first movie, or she is watching a movie that is sort of trading on that. So she's watching essentially a sequel to Demons and within the sequel to Demons. I think that might be the case. It's really tough for me to decide because I don't think it's ever made entirely clear. I think that's what's happening, though. Or perhaps it really happened and then they were making a movie about it and that's what she's watching. Anyway, there in the upfront, we get some introductions to the uh, residents of this building. There's uh, Bobby Rhodes, I think is his name, who was... In the first movie, he's playing a different character here, of course, but he's the, holy shit, she was a friend of mine, that guy. And there's another actor who comes over from the first movie playing a different character, but it doesn't really matter. The mo- the main characters end up kind of being this couple that's about to have a baby. There's our group of partiers. There's a little kid that's running loose in the building. Um, when his parents are are out, um, we've got a bunch of beefy guys who are exercising and working out in a, a gym that Bobby Rhodes is overseeing. And so against the backdrop of this, the birthday girl is, like I said, either watching a news report about demons or a movie about demons. And sure enough, a demon comes out of the TV and infects her with demon juice or demon scratches and that's kind of the mythology of this series or of these two films at least that if you get scratched if you are wounded by one of these demons then you become one of the demons which i like i think that's kind of fun it has an evil dead sort of vibe to it i think that's essentially the rules of the kandarian demons as well and as i said this is also directed by lamberto lamberto bava who directed the first film Uh, Dario Argento, again, produces both of these movies. And Bava, according to the the research I did, suggested that Dario Argento was real hands-off. He's more like, hey, I'm going to come to set. I'm going to look around, make sure everything's going okay. But I'm not going to try to direct this movie out from under you. This is your baby. Go ahead and do it. And 
that I think mostly works for the first one. I kind of wish this one was a little more reined in, even though I like how crazy it gets, but this one is definitely more about the set pieces as opposed to any of the characters and so forth. At least in the first one, you sort of follow the same group of teenagers or young people, young adults, and you kind of knew who the hero was going to be and that kind of thing. In this one, it feels pretty loosey-goosey when it comes to whose story is this really. It seems like it's a little bit of everybody's story until the end when we just need some heroes to step up. Uh, Agia Argento is, uh, this is her first role uh, playing a little girl who is beset by demons in a parking garage. Um, so you might ask the question, Bo, if you're going to kind of bag on this movie, why did you pick it? Why did I pick it? Well, because things happen in this movie, like that little kid that I mentioned earlier gets infected by demonic forces and goes after this pregnant lady. And then (laughs) when she ends up, you know, getting the better of this kid, then a little mini demon emerges from the little kid's body that looks like a little oily gremlin. It looks a little bit like the Cheddar Goblin from Mandy. And then that goes after her and she has to fight that. And then her husband ends up uh, fighting it. And it's just nonsense. It's just bonkers, which I love. And that's kind of what I love about the original demons as well. But in this one, it's kind of turned to 11. Where even more of the logic and characters and dialogue are... are tossed away just for the sake of having like oh we're gonna have this scene where a bunch of people who are still human are in a parking garage that is sealed off and that's the whole deal is the building is is sealed off and all these demons are running rampant through it and the people are stuck inside with these demons and our heroes Uh, or some of our heroes have gone to the parking garage and essentially circled the wagons, have piled cars up in a way to try to defend themselves. And then the demons come for them and it's just a massacre. And I really dig it. I think it's a great scene and it's really miserably hopeless that you like Aja Argento's father is just killed right in front of her. And then the demons come for her and it's just terrible. Like, all the stuff that happens to these characters is just awful. And another thing I've always liked about the Demon series, or or these two movies in particular, it's been a while since I've seen The Church, so I don't want to lump that in there because I I could be wrong. My memory of that one is not as clear. But the thing that I like about it is that the demons, as you're turning into one of these things, it looks just grotesquely painful. And even once they're turned, they all sound like they're in pain still. Or they're just, oh, oh. That's my impression of the demons in this movie, so feel free to carry that with you throughout the day. And I think all of it, it really works. Like, I think the demons are creepy, and I, I think the reflective eyes are really scary looking. And it it doesn't always make sense, and I know that's a, a thing that I keep returning to. I'm saying that, the, you know, the, this movie omits the logic a lot of times, but that's kind of okay because that's not what this movie is about. This movie is about uh, we're going to put these characters in a situation and there's going to be gross demon stuff that happens to them and you are either going to be grossed out or entertained or shocked or whatever. I still think all of that stuff works better in the original demons. That said, I still think enough of it works in demons too to make it completely worth your while. If you've never seen it, the or when you see the first demon kind of reconstitute in the movie slash news report that we're watching, the more I think about it, the more I think it's a movie, but also I still, I've seen this movie a number of times and I've still never completely decided what's happening at the beginning of the movie. I'm sure if I looked at Wikipedia, they would tell me, but you know, a little mystery is good in life sometimes. And... You know, this is one of those films that when I was a kid, I remember watching it. This Evil Dead, the original Demons, there was a handful of movies. That, there was something about the idea of, you know, this sort of painful possession and being in a siege scenario like this that really bothered me. 
and not in a like th- this movie doesn't hold up to the the light of day and the cold weight of logic more like this bothers me because this is maybe the thing that scares me most is the idea that you could be infected by something that would you know destroy your body and take over your mind and that you just have no recourse that there's no way to stop it there's no treatment you're just good old fashioned fucked and that's <laughs> it's sort of like the grudge house only your body where as soon as one of these demons so much as scratches your elbow you are in for it where your teeth are going to be pushed out of your mouth and replaced with fangs and it doesn't look like that's a great time and like i was saying that you know this demon at the beginning that reconstitutes it's a cool effect and the effects range from kind of goofy with the the little baby demon that appears that's really silly. There's a dog demon that's also kind of silly. But some of the actual like demon transformations of the people, as I said, when their teeth are being pushed out of their mouth to make room for these fangs and these claws are, are opening up their fingertips and whatnot. That stuff, I think, is really gruesome and yeah, perhaps a bit exploitative. But I don't care. That's that kind of stuff bothers me. There, there's a weird sort of body horror element to these movies that has always gotten under my skin. And of course, uh, this movie sort of ends with a very silly, like we're going to rappel down the side of the building and go into a TV studio, and we're gonna have one last showdown with this demon. And it kind of ends with a freeze frame where you assume that everything is kind of okay now, and. That is not nearly as rockin' as the end of Demons, which ends with, oh well, it's the apocalypse, better break out the machine guns. That is a much cooler ending than Demons 2. Also, the Demons soundtrack, both of these movies have sort of new wave or, uh, you know, sort of alternative music at the time, uh, sort of soundtracks. And I think the one in Demons is better than the one in Demons 2. That said, Demons 2 still has uh, some great stuff by, like, the cult. And, um, you know, I think there's there might even be a little erasure in there or something. Definitely some electronic music sneaking its way onto the Demons 2 soundtrack. Still really good. Not as good as the original. Still really good. And it has almost that punk rock vibe of like a return of the living dead. And there's just a shortage of that. I wish more movies sort of had that aesthetic and that sensibility. Maybe you can argue Deathgasm to an extent that celebrates metal music, but it doesn't use the music in the same kind of way where it's almost central to the plot as opposed to just being ambient, cool music. And, and that's kind of what I miss sometimes in uh, modern horror, or at least modern horror that I want to be kind of fun and gooey and gross. And I just don't think they, <laughs> this sounds a very real old band of me, and please correct me if I'm wrong, if there is a movie I ought to be watching that harkens back to the glory days of Demons and Demons 2, let me know what it is. But I just don't think they make movies like this very much because it's such a weird confluence of, you know, we want to rip off the evil dead a little bit, but we're also doing this in Italy. So it's got those Italian sort of cheapo sensibilities, but we're also going hard on the special effects. And by the way, we're going to have a kick-ass soundtrack. Like all of that stuff, I think really, really works for demons too. Plenty to complain about, but also a guy kicking a, demonic woman off of an elevator cable and seeing her you know crash down into the elevator below him pretty cool pretty cool and there's some shots of like the demons running up the stairs as they're coming to get this little kid that are really disturbing and again when I was a younger kid myself seeing that stuff really got under my skin and really unnerved me so little scary little gory a little bit of fun a lot of goofiness to it it's kind of what I want out of this sort of movie. Um, it's not the most satisfying kind of horror film to me as far as the cinematic diet of horror goes. This is like the potato chip where 
every now and again you're going to eat one of them black potato chips that you don't know how it snuck into the bag, but it tastes kind of foul. Uh, that said, you're also going to get some delicious potato chips that uh, are going to be salty and wonderful and maybe have a little hint of uh, sea salt as well. So that's all I got to say about Demons 2. I think Demons 2 is, you know, if you're judging it objectively, it's a not very good to average movie. But if you're a horror fan like me, and I assume like many of you listening to this, it's it kind of rules. There's something about it that is a little bit 